Hi, and welcome to this FHNW Centrum Schreiben tutorial. This is part one in a two-part series on how to critically assess literature for your own research. By the end of this tutorial, you'll understand what criteria should be met by the literature you use in your research, and specifically, how to assess whether literature is current and trustworthy. A quick Google search on marketing will provide you with more sources than you ever wanted. You'll find websites, newspapers, books, and journal articles. But what information is going to be most helpful for your research and needed in your literature review? A literature review provides an overview of previous research relevant to the present research. It should be up-to-date, trustworthy, responsible, applicable and valid, and well-supported. In this tutorial, we'll focus on the first two points, whether or not literature is up-to-date and whether it's trustworthy and responsible. When we say up-to-date, how recently does it have to have been published? Currency is slightly topic-specific, as technology moves faster in some areas than in others. In today's tech-driven world, things are outdated quickly. The Mac on the left was put on the market in 1989. I don't think any of you will be writing your literature reviews on a computer like this one, as technology has progressed significantly since then. In just the same way, you'll want to think carefully about how you use older literature. Some older seminal papers may still be worth mentioning, but you'll have to assess which parts of them are still relevant and what's outdated. For example, the Mac on the left was innovative in the late 80s and certainly had an impact on computing today and some of the contributing factors may still be relevant and worth mentioning. Determining how trustworthy a text is will take a little bit more work. Trustworthy basically means honest and reliable, but if you're not super familiar with the topic or the author, how can you tell whether it's trustworthy or not? Rather than banning certain types of sources, I'm going to give you some strategies to judge the quality of a source yourself, because you should apply a certain amount of caution to all texts. The first thing you should think about is whether the information you're reading supports or contradicts your own previous knowledge and experiences. While this may not give you the final answer, it should heighten your awareness, and then you should look to other sources. Is the information that you're looking at confirmed by other sources or not? The second thing that you should think about is linked to the first. A study can be shown to be trustworthy through replication. For example, similar studies that have achieved similar results. So if two different research groups have found the same conclusions, then you're on the right track. Another way is through triangulation. For example, if different methods are used. If an experiment is carried out in a lab setting, if questionnaires or interviews are carried out, as opposed to a real-world situation where consumers are being observed. Another important aspect to consider is whether the literature you're reading cites respected sources. This question assumes that the literature you're assessing cites sources. By citing, I mean refers to previous literature or data to support its message or claims. Academic and scientific books and journals do this. Even Wikipedia does this. Whatever type of source you're assessing, you want to think critically about where the information is from, and you want to go to the original whenever possible, as key information may be lost or excluded as passed along and you cannot critically assess information or claims without knowing what it's based on. When reviewing literature on your chosen topic, you want to be able to account for how the authors reached their claims, whether they had sufficient evidence, and whether their work was done in a trustworthy manner. Evaluating whether respected sources are cited is important, but how can you know whether the author of the text is respected when you're new to the field? Academic and scientific journals alleviate this step for you because they're peer-reviewed before being published. This means that generally, two other independent, non-affiliated experts review the article or book to make sure that it's up to scientific standards, trustworthy, and state-of-the-art. This is different from blogs, dot-coms, and even newspapers. Anyone can create or purchase a dot-com address and write whatever they want. That's the beauty of freedom of speech. Depending on the newspaper, they should be more reliable. However, they can still be biased in that, for example, they're edited in-house rather than being peer-reviewed by a third party, as is the case in academic journals. As you can see from the image, you can often check online to see which journals have been peer-reviewed. 
Another clue of how trustworthy a source is, is how often other people have cited it for their work. If you look down to the middle at advertising and social media mix getting the balance right, it was published in 2018, whereas the article below it was published in 2017. Advertising in the social marketing mix has already been cited 29 times, whereas the one below it has only been cited seven times, even though it was published a year earlier. In this case, I would read advertising in social media marketing mix first, as it has been cited more frequently in a shorter amount of time. You want to think critically about every source before deciding that their argument is trustworthy. However, with books published by academic publishers and peer-reviewed academic journals, you can proceed knowing that they've already been reviewed by a third party. To wrap up, when assessing potential sources, you want to think about how recent a publication needs to be in relation to the specific field and the purpose of your research. To gauge how trustworthy a source is, you want to think about previous knowledge and other things you've read. You want to think about whether it's been replicated or triangulated by other experts. Does it cite respected sources? Has it been peer-reviewed? And how often has it been cited? Thanks for listening to part one on assessing literature. Make sure you check back for part two. If you have any further questions or ideas for future tutorials, please contact us at Centrum Schreiben. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up below.